Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. August 8th, 2024. Let's get into it. So Elon Musk put out a tweet. I think it was the day. He says, I think we're looking at civil war in Great Britain. <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, I tell you what, their government is not buying for the people in Great Britain. They're buying for their power, that's for damn sure. Now they're talking about either completely banning X from all the people in Britain, or there was a story out that they're going to uh, arrest people who retweet something that their Ministry of Truth finds uh, hateful or, um, or disinformation. So you can go to jail in Great Britain now for just retweeting something that you, you might not even agreed with it. Suppose you were just saying, you know what, I think this is bull crap, and you retweet it and you go to jail. <laughs> I mean, boy, I tell you, they're pissing off a lot of their citizens in Great Britain. I wonder how much more they're going to put up with. Second story I wanted to talk about was uh, Tulsi Gabbard. She, uh, on, when was the transition to, uh, or not transition, when was the coup that took place with uh, when they took, uh, took Biden out and installed Kamala? I think it was on or about the mid, well, I'm, July 20th or so? Anyway, Tulsi Gabbard was put on the terrorist watch list <laughs> on the 23rd. So that's right after Kamala took power. And uh, you know Kamala hates Tulsi Gabbard. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I know what I'm implying. I got no proof of that. Now, Senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president. But I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but... She put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. But uh, why else would uh, Tulsi Gabbard suddenly be put on the terrorist watch list? Now, let me tell you what that means. Okay, it, it means you can't go through the fast line. Now, Tulsi travels three days a week, you know, flying, flying three days a week. So when you're put on that terrorist watch list, not only does it, that put you in a, a separate line, a supervisor comes out and no less than three TSA employees take her luggage and she packs light now. But they take her luggage apart, and they check every seam, every pocket, every every tooth, her toothpaste. I mean, everything. It takes about an hour to get through all the checks and balances. And then, because she's on the terrorist watch list, three flight marshals, uh, they, they got the uh, sniffing dogs, the, no, no less than two teams. They have to check her out. Uh, what else? There was all kinds of stuff. Uh, I can't remember, it's like seven people that follow her onto the plane. And she was kind of noticing all this, but she didn't know what was going on. She just knew that something wasn't right. <laughs> and uh, because she travels a lot, she says, I usually know who the marshals are. And just and, uh, Sean Henry was saying, well, did you did you say, hey, thanks for your service, Mr. Marshall? <laughs> so anyway, they, they got right it out and uh, she's going to be re represented by SEPQ to try to get her name off the watch list and uh, we'll see what happens. But boy, is that weaponized government or what? <laughs> I, I think Kamala's getting revenge. That's my honest opinion. So uh, anyway, I shouldn't laugh about it. I mean, that's a, that's depressing. And that woman, boy, if she gets to be president, can you imagine what the country's gonna be like? Anybody that would do something as vindictive as that. And then, right after Kamala gets in there, guess what? They raided Scott Ritter's house. They're saying that, uh, He's in violation of the Foreign Registration Act. I think it's something like that. It's four letters. I can't remember all of it. I think clearly the U.S. is trying to go after dissidents who have different positions on the war in Ukraine and different positions on the war in Gaza. Of course, Scott has a very different view uh, than the U.S. on this. And uh, he's very influential. I mean, they're going after one of the main uh uh, dissidents over these issues. He gets like a quarter million 
views every time he does an interview. And so they clearly do want to curb dissent, chill dissent, just uh, just as Scott said. It's always been the case that you're free to, free to say anything you want as long as it doesn't go against the mainstream narrative, right? And as long as you're not effective at the speech. And Scott goes against the mainstream narrative is and is very effective. That makes you fear that uh, others are next in line. You know, um, obviously, even myself, I wonder, you know, when is the FBI going to come a knocking? Almost every time I come back from a trip to the United States, I am uh, pulled over by customs and interrogated. Um, In fact, I was told by customs I'm now on some State Department list that requires me to be questioned. So, yeah, uh, I'm starting to feel that pressure. And, you know, my guess is it will... Uh, increase and by the way, those uh, interrogations began after my first trip to Russia in the Donbass. And uh, so, but I mean, holy shit! <laughs> Imagine the FBI coming to your house. I think they spent about half a day searching his house. They took out four boxes of stuff. I think all his laptops disappeared. I mean, you know, he has a business to run, man. He does a lot of interviews and stuff. I imagine they took most of that equipment just out of spite. And uh, so he's. He's kind of out of commission at the moment, although I, I did see him. I, don't, I haven't seen him in an interview, but uh, maybe he'll uh, get some more equipment here soon. I mean, he was making pretty decent money. Now, somebody said that he might self-incriminate himself because he says he does get paid by RT. If you, if you don't know, that's the, it's called Russian television, but it's English speaking. I get a lot of my information there. And uh, he says he also got paid by... Um, Oh, um, uh, what is Sputnik? Sputnik, that's kind of another Russian publication. But they're paying him for his time for doing his interviews. I don't see that you need to register as a foreign service. The only time you get registered by a foreign service is when you're employed by them. He's not employed, he just does interviews, and they probably slip him a little cash. But I don't know, I guess you could make a case. He's going to have to go to court on that and... uh, Unfortunately, and that's weaponized government again. Don't tell me it's not. You know, I'm sure if I did a got paid for an interview at RT, well, they might come after me. <laughs> but uh, but uh, if you did a, a, an interview on RT, you know, and you, you're a nobody, I don't think they're going to come after you. You know, it's just ridiculous. Even if you got paid a little bit of money, and from what I understand, it wasn't much he got paid in the first place. It's not like um, was it Kelly McVeigh? She's now uh, become. A, uh, an operative, I think it, it's an oligarch somewhere, I want to say out of Ukraine, and she's been hired, to, yeah, that's out of Ukraine, she's been hired to lobby Trump to get him to support Ukraine when he gets in office, and she's getting $50,000 a month, holy shit, $50,000 a month, and I tell you what, I always liked her as Trump's press secretary, but you know what, I guess if you're going to get paid that much, you know, she, it's not like she's going to uh, betray Trump, or well, I guess she's kind of betraying him in a way that she's going to be lobbying for Ukraine. But uh, you know, I'd look at it. Well, it's just a job. If Trump doesn't change his mind, I still got the money. So why not? You know. Anyway, that's the first three stories. We'll get on. I thought that the Tulsi Gabbard story was the best. Uh, being put on the terrorist watch list. I mean, here's a freaking war hero. Served 20 years in the military. Went over and fought for our country. And they're going to put her on the terrorist, well, Kamala's going to put her on the terrorist watch list? That's unbelievable, man. That's just unbelievable. And then Scott getting raided. I mean, all this is t- happening now after Kamala took power. I think that, you know, they're transitioning from, from Joe to her. So I think she's making a lot of decisions now up in the government. So, oh, the, uh, the next story was that, uh, and I think it might have been Joe Biden, but don't hold my feet to the fire on that. There's a bunch of tweets going out. That the Democrats said, if Trump wins, there will not be a peaceful transition of power. Now, that's if we have an election. I'm not even sure we're going to have an election. But uh, so they're going to do a peaceful transition of power for Trump, and uh, or not a non-peaceful tr- transition of power. So hell, that that's civil war. That's what happened back during the Civil War, when they, they wouldn't accept Lincoln when he got elected, and they fired on Fort Sumter. Well, what does that mean? Does that mean the military is going to start firing? On you and me, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't. Put, I wouldn't put anything past a the Democrat. They are vicious people. You know. I, I tell you my opinion of Democrats. You know. You know a Democrat, they'll stab you right in the back, man. You know they'll rat you out. I mean, you, if you say the 
You said you do something and they don't like you. They're going to do everything they can to get you fired. I can guarantee that. They, Democrats are vicious, man. They're vicious. So that was the, uh, that was the other story. Of course, in uh, Ukraine right now, I don't know if you're following it in the Kursk region, uh, Ukraine did a major offensive. They took uh, 1,000 of their best troops and committed them to an assault on the Kursk city, which is across the Russian border. And uh, man, I, I, from what I understand, that's a hell of a battle going on right now. Overnight, the fighting just continued as the Ukrainian armed forces tried to expand on the success of the first couple of days. Uh, the Russian armed forces, in turn, did not allow them to do those, and the Russian Ministry of Defense has published new footage of hitting Ukrainian targets on the Russian soil. On Wednesday, the Russian President Vladimir Putin heard from Valery Gerasimov, who's chief of the general staff, as he reported on the situation on the ground. Actions by border security units in conjunction with border guards and reinforcement units, along with airstrikes, missile forces and artillery fire, halted the enemy's advance into the Kursk direction. The enemy's losses amount to 315 personnel, including at least 100 killed and 215 wounded. Additionally, 54 armored vehicles were destroyed, including seven tanks. The operation will conclude with the defeat of the enemy and the restoration of control up to the state border. Those numbers are bound. They are certain to have increased up until now. Now, uh, this military operation on the Russian soil, uh, it's not the first one that the Kiev troops uh, are taking. Uh, previously, they tried to attack the region of Belgorod, but uh, the, this, the, this attack in the Kursk region, it's completely different, both in scale and in substance. Back then, in the Belgorod region, Kiev used mostly foreign mercenaries and the so-called the Free Russia Legion, which is, uh, well, it, it's, a, it's a something that Russia has designated as a terrorist organization, and they say that they consisted of uh, Russians who switched sides and went to fight for Ukraine. They also claim that they act independently from the command in Kiev, which gave the official Kiev some leeway and loopholes to say that those actors, that those, that those troops, that that force in Belgrade was acting independently from from them. Both the EU and the US, they are acting as if uh, this attack caught them uh, off guard, as if it caught them by surprise. But they have historically been saying that they support Kiev's right to defend itself however it sees fit. So the European Union, very much in line with that uh, policy and with that uh, statement, with those statements, uh, they have already supported Kiev's actions. The EU continues to fully support Ukraine's legitimate right to defend itself against Russian aggression and its efforts to restore its sovereignty and territorial integrity. Ukraine has a legal right to defend itself, including striking an aggressor on its territory. The United States also claimed that they did not hear from Kiev in advance before the beginning of this new offensive, which uh, seems highly unlikely given how much support the United States are providing to Kiev, both militarily and uh, diplomatically. But still, uh, while the United States have been saying that they will be reaching out to Kiev for comment, they have already said that they do not see any violations on behalf of the Kiev regime. It's not unusual for the Ukrainians not to notify us of their uh, exact tactics before um, before they execute them. Sometimes we're in communication with about them, sometimes we're not, and that's uh, it's appropriate for them to make those decisions. I'll answer it this way. Nothing about our policy has changed, and with the actions that they are taking today, they're not in violation of our policy. Uh, a lot of Ukrainians, they, Russians reported they killed 350 of them right off the bat, but uh, evidently they I didn't. I thought the advance had finished up, but... I just got a tweet not too long ago that now they're continuing to advance and the Russians are bringing up reserves and I don't think Putin's real happy about the situation. He did a, a public interview with Gerasimov and I, you know, a lot of people said he looked visibly shaken. I can't vouch for that, but he, he was, you could tell he was concerned anyway uh, about the situation. So that's, uh, that was a huge story and uh, by the way, uh, Russia took, um, on the uh, in the Donbass, uh, they took uh, New New York, and now there's two different spellings for that. I've seen it spelled New York, N E W Y O R K, and then I've seen it spelled N I U Y O R K. So I'm not sure of the spelling on that. I always spell it N I U because it to differentiate so people don't go New York, 
New York City, you just took New York City. <laughs> People are dumber than bag of stones sometimes, right? They probably believe that. So uh, anyway, so that's kind of the latest out of Ukraine. We'll talk about uh, the Mideast. Uh, I'm sure you know that uh, obviously Iran has not launched their coming attack on Israel. And there's a lot of stories out that uh, the U.S. and everybody else is begging Iran not to do a, a strike on Israel, but I don't see how they can get out of it. They've already said they're going to do it, and Hezbollah is chomping at the bit. They said no way, no how, they're going to hold back. So at least if, even if Israel doesn't launch, Hezbollah is going to launch. So we're going to see some major damage in, in Israel, and then the question becomes, is Israel going to retaliate? Which that would kick up the escalation ladder. And then also, what's the United States going to do? I'll give you a, a scenario here. Let's say the United States launches planes from uh, Qatar, where we got a base there. Uh, launches planes from the base in Iraq. Launches, uh, where's, it, where's the other one? I can't remember. There's four, like four bases over there. Saudi Arabia. Yeah, we got a base there, so they could launch from Saudi Arabia. Now, if they do that, and they bomb Iran, Iran said they're going to hit those bases. For sure. And they might just start destroying infrastructure in Saudi Arabia and Qatar and then you want to talk about the price of oil you, you could see fifteen dollars a gallon <laughs> I mean, if Iran takes out the oil infrastructure in, in the Middle East because these countries helped the United States bomb Hezbollah and bomb Iran or if the United States has the I'm sure that they're not going to do anything unless the United States physically bombs Iran okay and that's far as Iran goes but uh, Hezbollah you know the, the United States just blows the hell out of Lebanon. I imagine uh, Hezbollah's probably got some, some, well, you know the base in Iraq's going to go away, and you know the base in Syria is going to go away, and I've already done my video on that yesterday, saying get the troops out of there, get the troops out of there, especially if the United States decides they're going to bomb. But uh, anyway, so that whole situation is getting kind of crazy. I told you the, the 12th was a significant date. I just saw an ex post uh, some guy predicted at 2 o'clock, 2 a.m. tonight, the, uh, the, the, the strike's going to get launched. But then he backtracked and he said, well, it could be you know, the next day or the following day. And I'm, I don't know where he got that 2 a.m. number. I, I wouldn't. I tell you, I, I think it's going to be the 12th. I think they want the, the, the religious significance on that. I also think that they're still building up the infrastructure just in case uh, there's a big counterattack by uh, Israel or, or the United States on Iran. So I think they're still prepping, getting everything ready. So anyway, that's uh, it's the latest on that. So we got some uh, some more stories coming up. So the beehives are back. That's cool. I always like to see honeybees. I tell you what, in fact, I, I don't know about you, I just take a piece of bread, put a bunch of honey on it, let it soak into that bread real good, and then put some butter on it, either microwave it or stick it in the toaster oven, however you want it. Man, that's like, it's better than a, better than a chocolate chip cookie. <clears throat> Alright, just heard on the radio that Trump, he's going to, well, he's put in for a debate on September, I think it's September 3rd or 2nd. And then you got one on the 10th and one on the 25th if Kamala agrees to it. I don't think she's going to agree to it. She hadn't even answered a question from the press. And uh, J.D. Vance has been all over that. <laughs> he's, he's been doing a good job with that. Uh, but anyway, I thought that was interesting, uh, just uh, hearing about that. So uh, we'll keep going. I'm getting to my spot where I can drink some water. If you can't tell, it's hotter than hell today. Okay, we got a deer on the We got two deer. One's taking off in the woods over there. Oh, there he goes. Oh, well. Uh, all right. So... Uh, Anyway, Elon Musk is giving an interview to uh, Donald Trump Monday evening. I can't remember the time. I think they said 9 o'clock. Don't hold my feet to the fire on that. I didn't know. I forgot about this. You know, did you know that Elon Musk endorsed Trump? Now, I did also hear a tale. I think he's given, what, $45 million a month or something like that to the Trump campaign. So you can tell that Elon Musk, I wouldn't call him a Trump fan, but I think he just figures that you know, he's got to go with where he thinks the country or the person that can do the most good for the country. Because we're heading into a Great Depression and uh, inflation's going to get worse. 
I did check the uh, silver price today. Uh, man, big jump, big jump, went up a whole dollar. And that's, that's big, you know, because silver, you know, when you're talking about 26.50 and it jumps to 27.50 or 20, 28, I mean, that's a, that's a huge increase. So, uh, so that's good if you own a little bit of silver. Bad if you want to buy it. <laughs> you should have bought it when I told you. Yesterday would have been the day to buy it. Anyway, if you watch that video. So the, uh, the other thing was I thought was pretty cool was I got a like from Elon Musk. No less. Uh, he, he was talking about something. What, what's the best thing to do right now financially or something like that? I don't know what the question was. And I said buy mining stocks. And uh, he gave that a like. And I've given you throughout my videos a bunch of ticker symbols and mining stocks you can look at. This is not financial advice. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. I already own enough. I don't want to speculate no more because unless you're buying the big mining companies, any mining stock that you get is speculation. Uh, you know, like I said, Dolly. Dolly was one that I recommended a couple days back. So there was that. I did want to talk about the cart. I was telling you that they came and picked it up on Wednesday. I was sorry to see the cart go, but uh, but like I said, it wouldn't it wouldn't do anything. And this is a tip because I think that I caused the damage to the cart. Uh, if you're working around batteries like I was, you know my cart uh, th th took eight batteries. You know those big freaking lead acid batteries, which is another reason for the cart to go because all the new carts are lithium ion. Lot 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 more life in the battery and a lot a uh, lot less weight. A lot easier to uh, to charge them up and everything else, and they last a lot longer. So it's time for the cart to go, even though I'm out a thousand dollars. But what happened was, the, and this is when I think I messed the cart up. And this is just a tip for you. Okay, I was using the socket wrench to loosen the terminals because I was gonna I put the battery on a on a charger because uh, I have a, I had a special charger that I would use that would you could recycle the battery with it and and get a lot more life out of the battery that way. And so as I was taking the terminal off, the uh, socket wrench touched the, uh, the other terminal, which is like a spot weld. And man, you should have seen the sparks flying. Whoosh! It melted the end of that socket wrench. <laughs> I mean, it was like, holy shit, I'm glad I didn't get shocked because I was holding on to it in the middle, you know, and the, the current just went right through it. Probably got some in my hand. My, I don't feel much in my hands anyway, so who knows. But anyway, so I think that's when I probably shorted something out uh, when I did that. Now, my tip to you is, if you're going to be working with the socket wrench on some batteries like that, put electrical tape around the wrench. That way, if you do do something stupid like I did and cross that wrench onto two different terminals, you know, it won't, it, that, that insulation of the electrical tape, in fact, I, stupid me, I went in and taped the uh, socket wrench after that happened because <laughs> I didn't want it, I didn't want it to happen again, you know. But, uh, so that's just a little mechanical tip for you. I always try to give you a little tidbit every now and then. I know that you probably never wrench on your battery. I don't know. If you got a golf cart like we do down here in Florida, you're going to be, well, unless you're going to pay somebody to, to do the, uh, the batteries for you. Which is probably what I should have done. I probably still have a golf cart <laughs> if I if I just paid somebody to do it for me. Anyway, that's, uh, that's it for now. Damn, we're getting the wildlife today, aren't we? That's the most deer I've seen on this trail in a long time. There he is. Check him out. Let's see how close we can get. I won't be nice and quiet. He's taking off. Oh boy. Oh well. All right. Oh, there goes another deer. We haven't turned the phone around too soon. <laughs> Where there's one, there's always two, right? Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was the um, voting rolls. A couple pieces of good news there. Uh, they took uh, 90,000 dead people off of the rolls in uh, Nevada. That would have been more than enough to put Trump over the top in Nevada because I think the Democrats voted all those dead people. And then um, there's a couple of other states that they... Oh, yeah, Virginia just uh, said that they're going to clean up uh, their voting rolls and they said no illegal immigrants will be allowed on the voting rolls in Virginia So Virginia's Junkin's doing a good job there. It's going to be a nice fair election Of course you got that uh, Democrat Kemp in Georgia. He's trying to rig the election for Georgia down there again Georgia, why did you elect that guy again? You know, he's not a Republican. He's a Democrat man That guy is he's an evil son of a gun But anyway, so and of course the Ratburger is uh, is his secretary, what is it called, the secretary of state that runs the election, you know, the, he's going to rig it. 
So what, uh, I don't know, if Georgia I think is going to be slightly more fair, I think they had to do a couple of things because they lost some uh, some law cases. They weren't going to do it on their own, but the, Dem the Republicans held them to the fire. The other thing was Laura Trump, she's doing a good job. There was a tweet that, uh, that there's, there's going to be, uh, she's got 100 lawyers ready to go for the 2024 20, election. And uh, what was it? Oh, she's got 100,000 poll workers uh, lined up for the 2024 election. And that's what I'm encouraging you to do if you're watching this video. You know, go out and be a poll worker or do what you can. You know, if you just want to hand out leaflets for a candidate that you know that's a good person, you know, help them out. Democrat or Republican, I don't care. Speaking of Democrats, you know, <laughs> you know how I feel about Democrats. I want you to next time, next time you're out with a Democrat, because I can't be around them, obviously. But I want you to ask them, say, why, why do you want two, 20 million people in our country, you know, illegally? Ask them that question. I want to see. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know. 20 million. That's an exaggeration. That's an exaggeration. Yeah. Well, Kamala Harris was your border czar. Why didn't she do anything about the border? I don't know what you're talking about. She wasn't the border czar. She wasn't the border czar. Yes, yeah, that's what you're going to get from a damn Democrat. And then ask them why they don't care about 150,000 people dying from fentanyl. Or how about all the terrorists that have come across? And that's what I forgot to talk about that. I talked about it yesterday. I'll say, say it again today. If the United States bombs Iran, we're going to be in a war. We're going to be in the hurt locker. There are terrorist cells here in the United States, whether they're from Hezbollah or Yemen or Iran, they will get activated, and there's going to be some shit going down in the United States if we bomb Iran, or even if we bomb Hezbollah. They might, if they've got, which I'm pretty sure they do. I, I mean, I know I would. Wouldn't you? You know, the open border, you just fly them into Mexico and they can just come right up in the United States. No questions asked. I'd be, I'd say, well, you know what, go here. Here's a, here's a million dollars. You uh, four guys, you go to uh, the States. Uh, we've made arrangements with the cartels to get you weapons once you're in the United States, uh, once you've crossed the border. And then uh, you wait for our signal. And uh, when we tell you, go out and, you know, blow up some uh, uh, electrical stations or or maybe, you know, maybe shoot up a nuclear power plant or whatever, whatever you can think of. Uh, you know, maybe get, maybe look around and get us some good targets. I wish they'd hit Washington, D.C., but I think that would be a, a death match. They could, you know, they could do a lot more damage out on the countryside, like hitting, you know, uh, electrical stations that don't have hidden cameras or any of that sort of thing. So anyway, I'm just, just saying, go ask a Democrat about that. I want to know. I want to hear what they had to say. And put it in a comment below. I don't see how they're going to justify it. Why are they for something like that? Why are they for higher taxes? Why do you want to pay more in taxes? I don't get it, man. Does a Democrat make sense to you? It doesn't make any sense to me. And I keep telling you, abortion's a non-issue now. If that's your thing. You know, you, anybody can, any woman can take the pill and abort yourself in all 50 states. It's not, it, it, it's all legal. And, and, and Trump was pointing out, he do doing an interview at Mar-a-Lago. He says, well, because we kicked it back to the states and got rid of Roe v. Wade, Ohio, for example, they got much more liberal abortion laws now that it's back in the state. Which you wouldn't expect that. That's a Republican state. But yeah, they, they, I think they increased the, the time period for women to get their abortion. And then uh, uh, Kansas did too. So in, in two two Republican states, you actually got more liberal laws. And you know the Democrat states, they can chop the head off the baby and the woman can choke and pop the baby's head off when it comes out the womb in any Democrat state. So I don't get it. Abortion doesn't seem like an issue to me, but they're going to try to make it one. Mark my words. So before I get into my ex post, there's one uh, where, it, uh, and this is one of the reasons I think they're going after Scott Ritter. I'd forgotten about this. This is an old inner... This is back when uh, Joe Biden was grilling Scott Ritter. Let's watch that video. I respectfully suggest they have responsibility slightly above your pay grade. Slightly above your pay grade. To decide whether or not to take the nation to war alone. Or to take the nation to war partway. Or to take the nation to war half at, halfway. That's a real tough decision. That's why they get paid the big bucks. That's why they get the limos and you don't. I mean this sincerely. I'm not trying to be flip because I think, and that's why I said at the outset, 
The reason why I'm glad you did what you did, we should come to our milk. We should make a decision. But in terms of whether the Secretary of State has no more to consider than you do as the arms inspector, you didn't get in, didn't get my job done, get me in. Period. You made the deal, right? That's the deal. A deal's a deal. Get me in. Scott Ritter, I'm ready to go. It's not how it works. Now, maybe it should work that way. But I, wouldn't you acknowledge that if you were President of the United States or the Secretary of State, you'd sit there and say, now, okay, old Scotty boy didn't get in. We said he should get in. We want him to get in. It's important that he does get in. They're not going to let him in. So what are we going to do now? We know that France and Russia aren't going to be with us. We're quite confident China's not. We've already run those traps. They're not there. We're not sure where the United States Senate is, but have at it, boys. Go get them. And by the way, Scott and the boys say air power is not enough. I think it's a legitimate debate, Scott, or, uh, Major. I think it's a legitimate debate. But I don't think we should be putting it in the context of you have somebody up there at state saying, look, how can we weasel out of this agreement? We want to let this guy out there hanging. We're not, we're not this. It's a very practical political decision. Same kind of decision General Powell made. Same kind of decision President Bush made. Every president, every secretary of state has to do it. Like I said, they get paid more than you. Their job's a hell of a lot more complicated than yours. They may have made the wrong decision, and you brought it to light. We should address it. We should say straight up where we are, and we should do it. And for that, I thank you. But it's above your pay grade. Wasn't that awesome? <laughs> Scott Ritter, he put Joe Biden in his place. I think Joe Biden's held a grudge ever since then, and he finally got his chance to get back at Scott Ritter. So I was happy to, there was actually somebody posted that on X. And uh, I, I said, you know what, I forgot all about that exchange. I remember that because that, uh, that was real important to me because they were sending me to war. Uh, anyway, uh, Trump, uh, by the way, a brilliant, brilliant strategy. He just uh, said in his, uh, his thing that he's going to uh, take the tax off of Social Security. Now, that was Bill Clinton passed that tax. He didn't point that out. He should point that out. Democrat. Democrat was the person that wanted to tax all the seniors Social Security. And yet... The seniors still vote Democrat. <laughs> I mean, if, if you raise my taxes by 15%, I would say, you know what? I ain't voting Democrat no more. They still vote Democrat. I, I don't get it, man. When you ask, ask a Democrat about that, next time you're with a senior citizen, say, why are you for 15% tax on your Social Security? You know that Trump is going to lift that tax. So, but that takes the, uh, well, I mean, they're going to lie about it, but it takes the Social Security issue away from the Democrats. Because now they can't say, well, Trump's going to, he's going to take away your Social Security. He's going to cut your Social Security. You, you always hear those scare, those fear-mongering tactics. And no, no, Trump's going to actually take the tax off of Social Security. So that completely destroyed that one. And then the other thing that I liked was because uh, I used to wait tables. I don't know about you. And uh, they, they, they said they're not going to tax the tips no more. Of course, we all cheated anyway. You know, when you got cash tips... Most of the time, you might declare just a little bit of it, but, you know, that would be about it. So the government wasn't really able to just make criminals out of all the waiters and waitresses around the country. So Trump said, we're not taxing tips no more. I think that's brilliant, too. Hopefully that'll get him some of the younger vote because most waiters and waitresses, well, they used to be young. I don't know. <laughs> when you go to Denny's now, it's somebody that's a senior citizen. I'm going like, man, I'm glad that they got, well, the, before I broke my neck, I probably could have waited tables, but I couldn't do it now. Hell, I, oh, by the way, I, I did get the heat numbers. I told you it's hotter than hell. It's uh, 90, 95 degrees, which is not too bad, but with the humidity, they said the heat index is about 105. <laughs> so, somebody, that's why, well, I haven't been feeling too good. I don't know. So I had to drag my ass out here to get this hike in. But uh, I, I always feel better once I've done a hike and I'll just get home and relax. Boy, that water tasted good a little while ago, I'll tell you that. All right, let's get into the expos. This is Simon Atiba. New, in, new filing, prosecutors say Hunter Biden accepted payments to influence U.S. policy over for Romanian businessmen. Note, prosecutors say Hunter Biden, the son of President Joe Biden, took money from a Romanian businessman, Gabriel Pop, Popo, CIU, Popcube, 
who wanted to sway the U.S. government agencies during a legal issue uh, he had in Romania. Note the information was revealed in a court document filed in Los Angeles where Hunter Biden is set to go on trial for tax evasion on September 9th. Hunter Biden, who claims he's innocent, started working for Popovoff in late 2015 when Joe Biden was the vice president. They were worried this could have political fallout on Joe Biden and Hunter tried to hide what he was really doing. Uh, that's a story I'm sure you haven't heard. So, uh, Scott Adams, we need to create a sanctuary program for British free speech offenders. <laughs> so if you're getting arrested over in Britain for uh, reposting the next tweet, so Elon Musk says this is actually happening. He actually replied to that. This is uh, Jeroman. Advancement of the Russian armed forces towards Periridizi. Oh man, I just got to spell this. P-E-R-E-E-Z-D-N-O-Y-E. Anyway, that's a town, uh, I think it's in Odessa, and uh, that's a big um, supply hub for the Ukrainians, and uh, the Russians are moving in there pretty quick. My son, if you watch the military channel, uh, that, that'll show you what's going on. So uh, Wagner-affiliated uh, channels report a massive column with Wagner flags is already moving toward Krusk, the Krusk Front. So reinforcements are arriving for the Russians on the Krusk Front. Uh, I don't think those thousand Ukrainians are going to be around much longer. So uh, that, that was the 90,000 votes. Uh, good man. I think it's absolutely bullshit that Scott has been harassed by our own government just because he says things they don't like. Scott has been overly cooperative and follow, followed every, every rule they place in front of him, and still they continue to harass him. So I might put that on the video. It's just an interview that he gave. I'm sure if you're paying attention at all, you can find it on uh, X. Uh, so, uh, replying to D.C. Dranko, will, will Governor Brian Kemp do this? Oh, there, this is it. So, I'll go ahead and read this to you. Governor Glenn uh, Duncan signs executive order requiring election officials to ensure no ballot counting machines are connected to the Internet. Voters' Social Security run birthdays match what's in the system. And then, uh, and then it's, well, D.C. Dranko says, I wonder if Governor Brian Kemp is going to do the same. <laughs> I can guarantee you he's not. Hell no, that fucking Democrat, he ain't doing shit. So, uh, anyway, that's good news for Virginia. I was telling you about that earlier. Secretary of Defense, uh, today I spoke with the Israeli Minister of Defense, Yaf Gallat, to reaffirm U.S. commitment to Israel's defense from threats posed by Iran, Leban Lebanese, Hezbollah, and other Iran-allied militia groups. We agreed the attack from Iran-allied militias on U.S. forces stationed at Al-Assad Air Base in western Iraq marked a dangerous escalation, and I accepted. I updated Minister Gallant on measures to strengthen the U.S. military posture in light of the escalating situation. So there you go. We got unequivocal defense. Or unequivocal. By the way, when did Congress vote? When did Congress vote to go to war with Iran? I didn't see that vote. Isn't that what the Constitution says? That Congress has to approve, you know, whenever we deploy for war around the world? They've just abdicated. I mean, the president can, the president is the totalitarian dictator that can send the military wherever he wants. I can't believe the Pentagon puts up with it. It doesn't make sense to me. Breaking, Georgia State Election Board member Dr. Janice Johnson says that in the last year, four Georgia County election systems have been hacked opening up concerns that could be that. So we're getting down into the, the post uh, that I've already did in yesterday's video. Peace out. Stay free.